Welcome to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, the number one podcast and resource for black entrepreneurs. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and Black Entrepreneur Blueprint was created specifically to educate and inspire black entrepreneurs to launch, build, and grow successful, sustainable businesses. Join us as we help build an economic power base in the worldwide black community by building and supporting black owned businesses. If you're currently an entrepreneur or want to be an entrepreneur, you're invited to join us each and every week here at Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family and get ready to elevate your entrepreneur IQ. Welcome to the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, episode number 465. I'm your host, Jay Jones, and today we have another outstanding and informative show in store for you. Today's show topic is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam to sell get rich quick programs? Is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam to sell get rich quick programs? The reason this subject matter came up is because I was recently interviewed on a podcast called The Finance Rebel by Kamari Ellis, which is a great podcast. Make sure that you check it out. Go to YouTube and type in The Finance Rebel and make sure you guys subscribe. But he actually played a clip and it was a clip of a gentleman talking about generational wealth. And he basically said that generational wealth is a marketing strategy to help scammers sell all of their get rich quick programs. And so he mentioned a couple other things. He also said that um, by teaching generational wealth, You're making people feel guilty who aren't able to provide that for their next generation and subsequent generations. And so I thought it was a very interesting topic. And what we're going to discuss today is my thoughts on that. And also, I'm going to give you some tips and ideas about generational wealth. And I'm going to compare generational wealth versus transformational wealth. And we'll get into all of that in a minute. Before we get into that, let me just share a few things with the Black Entrepreneur Blueprint family. First and foremost, guys, I want to welcome all first time listeners to Black Entrepreneur Blueprint. Welcome to the BEB family. Please stick around until the end of today's broadcast. And I'm going to share all my social media contact information and my resource links, such as the link to my latest book, Unlocking the Power of Chat GPT, the ultimate prompting handbook for beginners. So you can go to unlockingchatgpt.com for more information. Also, something that's super relevant to today's conversation. I want to give you guys an opportunity to get in on my Pinpoint and Monetize Your Genius program. That's one of my flagship programs, guys, that helps you take your genius, which is the intersection of your passion and your talent, and to monetize it. Problem is most people don't know how to monetize it. So you can go to the standard website, the main website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. And right on the first page, you'll see pinpoint and monetize your genius. You can click that button and then use the code genius 97, genius 97. The program is normally $247, but you can get it and save $150 and it'll only be a $97 investment. And the reason I wanted to share and provide this discount for you is because this is very pertinent to what we're going to be talking about today. And I think one of the major issues is that a lot of people are following these get rich quick programs when they should be focusing on their genius and learning how to monetize that. So as opposed to buying a program, what I'm trying to teach you is take what's already inside of you and use that to build a profitable business. There's a huge difference between chasing paper and chasing purpose. So use what you've already been given and monetize that versus going and falling for these get rich quick schemes. But we're going to jump into all of that in a second. So you can go to the website blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, click on the link that says pinpoint and monetize your genius and use code genius97 Or you can go to bebgenius.com, which is going to take you to the same page and click there and go into the program, bebgenius.com. Or you can go to the main website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com 
and click pinpoint and monetize your genius. So let's get ready for today's content. Is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam to sell get rich quick programs? So, you know, everybody talks about building generational wealth, but is it really a sneaky way for scammers to get you to buy their online programs or whatever they're selling? And this question was posed to me on a recent interview, as I mentioned, on the Finance Rebel by Brother Kamari Ellis. And so when he played the one minute clip, he asked me, what was my response? Now, remember, I haven't heard the whole context of the conversation, but here's what the gentleman said in a nutshell. He said, uh, generational wealth is a marketing strategy that's used for the black community for the by these scammers for us to buy these get rich quick programs. Right. He also said that generational wealth, the concept is making people feel guilty because they haven't provided generational wealth for their family. And they also uh, he also talked about it's it just takes time to build generational wealth, which I definitely agree with. So I want to break this down real quick and give some responses to this. And then I'm also going to give you guys a couple of tips and ideas to help you when it comes to generational wealth versus transformational wealth. And that's what I want to talk about first. And transformational wealth, that's something that I, I kind of coined but it's a little different definition than in the dictionary. So I'm going to go and give you guys the definition of generational wealth and also transformational wealth, which I'm also into. So what is generational wealth? It's assets that are passed down through families to children, grandchildren, and beyond. Assets passed from one generation to the next might include cash, investments, property, and more. So we all know what generational wealth is building enough wealth to pass down to future generations. Now, what is transformation? The definition of transformation, and then I'll get into transformational wealth. Transformation is defined as a dramatic change in form or appearance, a dramatic change in form or appearance. Now, to me, my definition of transformational wealth is, I I think it's a relative term. So transformational wealth is a relative term that describes any positive change in an heir's financial status compared to the previous generation. Okay, any positive change in your heirs, your children, your grandchildren, your great grandchildren, whatever, in your heirs financial status compared to the previous generation. So it's all relative. Right. So for someone who grew up in in abject poverty, that now has given their children the ability to go to college and make a great income, that's transformational wealth, okay? It's put their children and their other heirs in a better position. So a lot of times when we talk about generational wealth, we're talking about multi-generations. But for me, transformational wealth takes a little bit longer, but it puts you in a position to give your children a better life than you had. And I think most parents would say that's their number one objective. And so one of the things I wanted to talk about real quick was um, the gentleman said that uh, making or talking about generational wealth made people feel guilty, right? And I get what he's saying, but to me, you shouldn't have to feel guilty because you do the best that you can do. And it's almost like um, you're scared to win. Right. If you don't aspire to me, this is my my personal opinion. If you're not aspiring for generational wealth, then what's the point? Don't you want to get that? Now, if you don't reach that, that's okay. Like Beanie Siegel said in the song, feel it in the air, shoot for the moon. But I still reach those stars, even if you don't get to the moon. So you want to aspire. And I, I tell you, in today's world. It's crazy. Like these little kids, I'm looking at some of these little kids and that they're playing for participation trophies. These little kids playing soccer and flag football and all that. They, they're scared to make the kids win or lose. But that's what life is. It's about being a, 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 a good winner. And it's also about understanding that you're going to lose sometime. And so when you're not striving for the highest form, to me, that's almost a loser's mentality. You know, and once again, not knocking the brother, 
because I remember I only heard like a minute snippet of what he was talking about. So I don't have the entire context of, of how that conversation came into play. But to me, why not shoot for the moon? Right. If you miss, you'll still be amongst those stars. And that's the whole key. So I've seen little kids, uh, one of my cousin's kids, he's playing in this uh, soccer league and they don't have losers. Everybody gets a participation trophy. And to me, that's kind of silly because that's not how life is. Sports teaches you how to win gracefully and lose gracefully. And you're going to need those skills when it comes to the real world. OK, so that was the first thing uh, that really stood out to me that he was saying uh, it made people feel guilty. Guess what? We all want to create generational wealth. But the question is, is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam or a marketing ploy for people to sell get rich quick programs? So let's start out with is generational wealth uh, talk a marketing ploy? And to me, I think it is. Now, I believe that many people that sell those products and services or get rich quick schemes use generational wealth as a buzzword or, or a dog whistle. And it's really used to entice people to buy, you know, they get rich quick programs. OK, but the answer to that, guys, is you have to have discernment. OK, who are you receiving this information from? Somebody that popped up on Instagram and now is telling you that. They're doing, you know, millions of dollars in, in the last 30 days, you know. So, excuse me, you have to have the power of discernment. And one thing my mom always told me from since I was a child and I've imparted this in my children. Remember the source. Remember the source of the information that you're taking in. Sometimes, you know, we don't know people's intent. Some people may have a negative intent. They may, once again, be scammers trying to tell you this information, scare you about not having generational wealth, shame you into not having generational wealth to sell this scam or product. There are other people that have an intent that, you know, are trying to help you, but they're giving you the wrong information. OK, because of their scope of, of, of knowledge or information. And so you always have to remember the source. And I talked about this, I believe, last week or the week before last. That's why. I've cut down the people that I listen to in terms of podcasts and information, because on this Internet, you can be anything that you want to be. There's scammers all over the place. Somebody sold, you know, ten dollars in e-commerce and now they're selling a course on how to make one hundred thousand dollars in e-commerce. And they've never done that. That's why I always talk about I'm a guru. I'm not a guru, right? I, I share with you guys my ups, my downs, my highs, my lows, my wins, my losses, almost losing it all twice. I'm transparent about that. I'm sharing my journey and my experiences. And I've been blessed to be able to come back after almost losing it all twice to be able to build two successful, you know, separate businesses at those times. And so that's the thing you have to, number one, be concerned with is your discernment, right? Who are you getting the information from and why are you getting the information? OK, but I do think that the generational wealth talk is or can be used as a marketing ploy. But for me I and mean, my family, that's what I'm trying to build generational wealth. So to me, if you're not aspiring for that, then something's wrong. Why not shoot for for a high goal versus, you know, not shooting for anything at all? You do, you're going to do your best. That's all we ask. I can't ask anybody more than doing their best. Some people's best is going to create generational wealth. Others people's best is not. It is what it is, right? But you got to try and do your best. So is generational wealth talk a marketing ploy? It can be used as a marketing ploy, but there's something that I think we should all shoot for. It should be an aspirational goal. The next... Uh, Thing that we talked about on the uh, podcast was, uh, do I think generational wealth is attainable? And most definitely, yes, I think generational wealth is attainable, but you have to build it over time. It's not going to happen overnight, you know, and there, there are a few simple ways to create gener generational wealth for your family. Right. And we're, we're going to go through a couple of different ways. And, and this is what I really want to highlight. Not everything is going to be uh, work for everybody. Everybody has their own thing, right? 
And so that's why I talked about pinpoint and monetize your genius. Instead of looking at all of these different programs and all of that, use what you already have. Your God-given gifts, your genius, which is the intersection of your passion and your talent, to build a successful business. And that's why when, when I talk about transformation, transformational wealth or generational wealth, that's what I'm talking about. Because I got tired of seeing people hawking all of these different programs. Use what you have and you maximize that and you build a business. This program doesn't tell you you need to start this business. This, build, this, this program teaches you how to use what you have to build the correct business. So make sure you guys go to uh, bebgenius.com and, and use the code genius97 to, to take $150 off the program. But back to the question, do, um, do I think generational wealth is attainable? Most definitely. And here's a couple of ways that you can build generational wealth. And I talked about this on the podcast. Uh, you, you don't have to do anything crazy, guys. It could be as simple as buying a, a couple million dollar life insurance policy, right? That's generational wealth. So when you transition, your children will be able to benefit from you investing in life insurance. So if you have a $5 million policy, even a $1 million policy, that can be transformational wealth, okay? And once again, transformational wealth, it's relative. If you're used to having millions of dollars and you get a million dollar policy, that's not transformational because you're used to it. But if you're if you're used to making fifty thousand dollars a year and then all of a sudden your parent or your, your mother or father or somebody dies and leaves you a two million dollar life insurance policy. Guess what? That's transformational. And if used properly, it can be generational. OK, so, yes, you can create generational wealth. The easiest way to do it is life insurance, guys. You also can build assets such as real estate and it doesn't have to be anything crazy. Right. So a lot of times when we talk generational wealth, people always think about entrepreneurship and most definitely you can build generational wealth that way. But it could be something something as simple as building a real estate portfolio. It could be something as simple, guys, as not selling the first house that you bought. Right. And then using that as a rental property. I know so many people that have moved from their starter home to a new home and they rent out their old property, right? Real life example, my cousin uh, retired as a colonel in the army and every place that he was stationed in the States and he did 25, 26 years, he bought a house and he never sold the houses. He always rented them out. I think he had like, I got seven or eight houses, right? And so he's moving from, Atlanta to I think he went down to Alabama or somewhere I can't remember he kept his house in Atlanta and he's done that everywhere he's gone and he's rented it out he's got property management companies right he goes through the army you know to rent out and um, you know rent out to current military people but he's got like seven or eight houses okay another thing that you can do guys is um you can have a full-time or part-time business doesn't have to be anything crazy, but if you allocate your your resources that you make from your business over time and save them up or invest them, when it's time for you to transition your assets to your children, then you might have a nice nest egg built up. Another thing is creating intellectual property. You can write books. Just think about some of the artists, right? Like Basquiat. Basquiat was damn near broke when he was when he was painting, right? But after he died, those assets, those paintings became valuable for his family. So creating intellectual property, building assets. I always talk about building assets. Those assets may not give you any return today, but they can give you a return in the future or your heir's uh, future. OK, so you write books, right? You get royalties, you create software, whatever, building assets. Another thing is you can parlay your W-2 income into revenue generating vehicles. You don't have to be an entrepreneur, right? Save up for your, you know, your retirement, max out your 401k, get your matching and all of that stuff. Parlay that into revenue generating or revenue building uh, vehicles. Okay. Or you can take the money that you make and finance your business. I've done that before when I was in corporate America. 
part of my paycheck was going to finance my business. So the answer to this question, do I think generational wealth is attainable? Most definitely. Now, like I said, you don't have to do it by just being an entrepreneur or getting rich quick because that doesn't happen, family. You're not going to make money in any get rich quick program. I hear people all the time. They come up to me and ask me about my podcast, man. Yeah, you making money on your podcast. I say, yeah, I say, but I, I didn't start making money from the podcast for two and a half years. And the reason was I needed to understand and let my audience tell me what they needed from me. And it was never built or developed to make money. It was built to be as a service. I'm sharing my experiences with the BEB family. I'm letting you know the things that I did wrong that I don't want you to do wrong. And so that's the difference between doing something, chasing the paper versus chasing the purpose. And now, yes, over close to 10 years, over 465 episodes, I've built up a, a nice business. I have advertisers. You know, I have products I talk about on the, on the program, just like Pinpoint Monetize Your Genius. But I do that, and I never started out doing that, but I, 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 I understand and I look at what does the BEB family want? What do I think is most impactful? And so that's why the products I create, the books I write, the whole ecosystem is designed to help you elevate your entrepreneur IQ, not to get rich quick but to help give you a guide to be able to move from point A to point B. So there's no real get rich quick schemes out there. If you're following any of that stuff, save your money because it all entails work. But once again, why not do the work that you were designed to do, right? If you're an automobile, you weren't designed to fly, right? So why are you trying to fly? If you're, if you're a, an airplane, you weren't designed to, to go on the water. Well, they do have those airplanes, but that's not your primary design. Your design is to fly and cut through the air, right? Not through the water. So why not use what you've been given by God, the creator, to monetize that? That's that's why, once again, it's not selling a, a, a business opportunity or get rich quick program. All it is, is bringing what's inside you out and being able to teach you how to monetize it. All right. The other question uh, that I was asked um, or that we want to talk about are what are some tips to build generational wealth? All right. The first thing, and I mentioned this early on in today's show, is don't be scared of the pressure to build generational wealth. Do not be scared of that pressure to, to build generational wealth. To me, once again, that's a loser's mentality. You do the best that you can. I can't do any more than the best. So you're going to bust your hump and try to create generational wealth for your family. Okay. But once again, don't be scared. There's nothing to be scared of. You're going to work, go to work. You're going to make a living. You're going to make a life regardless, but let's be strategic, right? And, and be, and, and make conscious decisions to try to build generational wealth. If not generational wealth, guys, transformational wealth, taking from where you are and giving your children a better lifestyle. And you hope that they continue to, to move that forward. So in several years, whatever, depending upon where you start from, it's all relative. Your heirs are going to be in a much better position than you are. Okay. That's what, what happened in my family. I, I look at my grandparents on my mom's side, uh, South Carolina, right? They're down there. I mean, like my grandfather always said, he says, son, I, ne I never had much, but I always got food, clothing and a roof over my head and love. And then my mom, you know, and my dad, they they moved a little bit for more forward. I'm taking it to another level. And I pray that my kids continue that that transformation. OK, hopefully I'll get to the point where it's generational wealth, where my grandkids don't have to worry about money. Not there yet, but I'm striving to get to that point. All right. So um, that's one tip. Right. Another tip is change your mindset, guys, and believe that it's possible by looking at other people's success. The mindset I talked about that last week, you know, change your mindset, change your money. So a lot of times we look at situations, oh, I'll never be able to create generational wealth. Everybody probably says that at some point in their life. 
the people that have already accomplished it, right? But you have to have the mindset that yes, it's possible. It's possible. And I'm going to give you some real life examples at the end of this where it doesn't take a whole lot of a, a, a whole lot of thought or, or you know what I mean? Now, it does take consistency, but we'll talk about that in a minute. Another tip is create a plan. You want to start now and leverage time. The earlier you start, the better. Right. So if you're maxing out your 401k and you're 25 years old, you want to keep doing that till you're 55, 60 to whatever when you retire. The earlier you start, the more time your money and your assets have to grow. OK, so create a plan. Start now. Leverage time and use that as a benefit. Next, uh, another tip is decide what vehicles you're going to use to build your generational wealth. OK, what vehicles are you going to use? You know, savings, 401k, real estate, stock market, uh, whatever. What vehicles are that you, are you comfortable with to help you build that generational wealth or your aspiration to attain generational wealth? The least thing you want to do is have transformational wealth, putting your kids in a better place than you are. OK. And the last one is uh, last tip. Build slowly and consistently. Remember, it's about building assets. That's what I talk about. Building assets. My all my books, my online courses, my intellectual property, my trademarks. Those are assets. I may not see a, an immediate return, but they're assets. Right. Domain names. Like I said, I've sold domain names and made money. A domain name is an asset. You buy it one time, you sit on it. It's digital real estate. People are selling domain names for hundreds of thousands of dollars. It's got to be a good one. But I know somebody that's selling domain names for a couple of thousand dollars a month. Coming up with them and then being able to market and sell them. Now, before we get to the last uh, quarter of the show, guys, let me just give out my social media contact information and resource links super quick. Everything I tell you is on the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Everything is on the site. Top of the show, I mentioned my latest book, Unlocking the Power of Chat GPT. Just go to unlockingchatgpt.com. Also, I mentioned... Uh, in terms of my online programs, Pinpoint and Monetize Your Genius. Make sure you take a look at it. And if you're serious about building a business around your, your genius, which is the intersection of your passion and your talent, and you're tired of chasing paper and you want to chase purpose and have fulfillment, go to the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Right on the front page, hit uh, Pinpoint and Monetize Your Genius. Use the coupon code Genius97. The first 10 people, it's only 10 coupons, so use that Genius97 and you'll save $150 off of the $247 price. All right. You can also go to bebgenius.com. It'll take you right to pinpoint monetize your genius. Also, if you're uh, BEB Academy, don't forget three days free access to the Academy. Go to the website or you can go to BEBacademy.com. Now, in order to get in touch with me, anything long, family, hit me on my, my email, jjones at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S at blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, Facebook, Black Entrepreneur Blueprint, Twitter, jjones001, J-A-Y-J-O-N-E-S-001, Instagram, I got two IG accounts, the first one is J Jones for real J A Y J O N E S the number 4 R E A L second one is Black Entrepreneur Blueprint also don't forget to connect with me on LinkedIn go to LinkedIn type in J Jones Black Entrepreneur Blueprint connect with me there and also YouTube guys make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel go to YouTube type in Black Entrepreneur Blueprint hit that subscribe button we have additional content on YouTube that is not on the show so also, that is on the website. Go to blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. Hit the about button. And under my bio, you have all of my social media contact information. All right. So the best thing to do is go to the website for everything I just told you. All right. Let's get back to the last quarter of the show. And we're talking about is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam to sell get rich quick programs? All right. So here's a real life example 
of building generational wealth uh, from my in-laws. Okay, now my in-laws did it slow and steady. They're not entrepreneurs or anything. Okay, and they're in their 80s right now. But what they did was they worked in the school system or in education. My father-in-law started out as a teacher, high school principal, a college provost. Uh, so he's been in education his whole life before he retired. Same thing with my mother-in-law. She was an elementary school teacher for 30 plus years. Very frugal people, uh, weren't into the flash and cash. And uh, they, they, you know, they did, they bought some real estate, obviously their home, they lived in their home, which is paid off. They also bought some property down in West Palm Beach, Florida on the uh, PGA National Golf Course, which anybody that plays golf, you know, that's where they have a lot of the majors that they come down there. They're on actually, you can sit on in their porch and you can actually look at, I believe it's the ninth hole of PGA National. You can literally, you can see Tiger Woods and all those cats. Uh, they're probably about 45 or 50 yards from the back porch. And so obviously that property, when they purchased it, uh, was very, you know, was very popular. And so over the years, they've had people like begging them to sell it. And they're, they're never going to sell it. They said they want to pass that down to obviously their heirs, my wife and her brother and sister. But here's the thing. They didn't go out and start a business. They didn't do any get rich quick schemes or anything like that. They've built up assets and were very good stewards of their assets over the years. As a matter of fact, my mother-in-law uh, is is more the, the mover and shaker, right? So she bought one condo down in West Palm Beach, and then she sold that after a couple of years and bought a bigger one in the same development. And so once again, it's not anything super crazy, just slow and steady over time being able to build up assets. And so with the current home they have, the investment property that they have, well, they're actually down there probably four or five months a year. So they're back and forth. And the assets they built up over retirement, you know, with their investments, they've done very well for themselves. And so that's a, that's that it's, it's not anything crazy. It's just slow and steady wins the race. Now, I understand it. a lot is going to depend on your career and also the industry that you're in. If you're in the educational industry, normally you're not going to get fired unless you're doing something real crazy. As opposed to like right now, tech, the tech industry is taking a major hit, major layoffs and stuff like that. But when you're able to stay and continue to make money at a company or companies for long periods of time, you're able to build up those assets. So that's just a real life example of people building. I'm not going to say it's necessarily generational wealth, but it's damn sure transformational wealth. And guys, here's the easiest way, the most simple way to create transformational at least or generational wealth. It's life insurance, your primary residence, and your retirement assets. Life insurance, your primary residence, and your retirement assets, okay? Most people, um, you know, have life insurance, be it through their job or whatever. Think, Don't just think about the premium. Think about the next generation. Dame Dash always says, I hustle for my last name, not my first. So what's he going to do for the next generation and the generation thereof? I guarantee you, if you have a $2 million, $3 million life insurance policy, that that's going to make a big difference in your heir's life, right? Also, your primary residence. A lot of people, that's one of their biggest investments, you know? So you can keep your primary residence, pay it off, and that's transferable when you transition, when you die. Another thing is your retirement assets. If, you know, you're at a company that, you know, has a retirement plan or you can create your own, you know, retirement plan, um, that's something that you want to do too. So those are simple ways. Life insurance, your primary resident, and retirement assets. So that's that's pretty much today's show, guys. But once again, is generational wealth really attainable or is it a scam to sell get-rich-quick programs? I definitely think generational wealth is attainable. You always want to strive for the best, right? If you don't make it, as long as you do your best, that's all people can ask of you. Don't be scared to fail or don't be scared 
and not even try to create generational wealth. To me, that makes absolutely no sense whatsoever. As long as you leave your next generation in a better situation than when you came up, you've done your job. And sometimes that doesn't even happen, right? But all we can say, guys, or all we can ask is doing your best. Life happens. Things happen that may not allow you to to do what you want or accomplish what you want. But that's why we had to learn how to win gracefully and we got to learn how to lose gracefully. But the whole objective is don't be scared to shoot for the moon. Even if you fail, you can reach those stars. And it's so funny on on the interview uh, after I heard the uh, gentleman make those comments, you know, about the generational wealth being a marketing strategy and, you know, people were feeling guilty. First thing I said to myself, man, if you're scared, say you're scared, right? If you're scared, get a dog. Don't be scared to strive for the highest level possible. That's what winners do. Winners continue to strive for the highest level possible. The loser mentality says that I'm not even going to try because I don't think I can do it. And, you know, I, I, I'm going to feel guilty if I don't. That's to me, that's the that's the craziest thing I ever heard. Always strive for the best. And if you don't make it, so what? You did your best. And that's all you can ask of somebody is doing their best. Your parents or whoever your guardians are, you know, they're doing their best to help you get to a different level than where you are. Me as a parent, I'm doing my best to help my kids get to a different level than where I started. Okay, so I've already achieved that part. Now I'm looking for the generational wealth. Okay, so guys, I say this each and every week, but it's true. We get more and more downloads because of you, the BEB family. I appreciate you guys so much. Please continue to spread the word about the podcast, the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com. We want that to be the resource for black entrepreneurs. We have all types of resources on there. Make sure you check it out. Also, guys, don't forget to check out Pinpoint and Monetize Your Genius. Go to the website, blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, and you'll find it there. And use the coupon code Genius97. You're going to save $150 off of the normal 247 investment. So the program is only going to be a $97 investment. So you can go to blackentrepreneurblueprint.com, hit that pinpoint monetize your genius and use the code genius97. Or you can go directly to the page bebgenius.com, bebgenius.com, click the button and use the code genius97. And I'm going to tell you, when you chase purpose versus chasing paper, it's a totally different thing. So I had to once again block out all of the noise out there because once again, there's a whole lot of get rich quick schemes out there. I'm never going to tell you you're going to get rich quick. It is a process for anything to build a a, a solid business, right? So I don't care if you're looking for generational wealth. I don't care if you're looking for transformational wealth. I don't care if you're looking to make $1,000 a month. It's not going to be easy, but there's a process and a system to it. What I'm saying is stop trying to follow somebody else's blueprint and create your own blueprint with pinpoint and monetize your genius that is based on what you've already been given. The reason a lot of people aren't successful as entrepreneurs is they're trying to do the wrong thing. They're chasing the paper or a new shiny object versus doing what or using what you've been given by the creator. Use your passion, use your talent. And what I'm helping you do is identify your passion and your talent. And then I'm showing you how to monetize it in the program. And that monetization can come in and look different for everybody. Remember, there are only six type of things you can sell. Your physical products, your digital products, your services, somebody else's physical products, somebody else's digital products, and somebody else's services. Those are the only six type of things you can sell. And based on your genius, there's going to be certain things that are going to make more sense for you to sell. You're not going to sell everything. You may just be physical products. You may be digital products. You may be both. It all depends. And that's why this program is tailored to help you design a business around what you've been born with. It's it's pretty simple. So make sure you check it out. Don't forget to use the code genius 97. Now, 
I say this each and every week because it's true, guys. We get more and more downloads because of you, the BEB family. I appreciate you guys so much. Remember, it's not about me. It's not about you. It's about us. It's about building an economic power base in the worldwide black community by building and supporting black-owned businesses. Love you guys. See you same time next week. Peace.